Hello, and we're back. We're on day four of drawing Critical Role. And I'm only spending an hour, hour and a half or so a day on this because it's we're having a heat wave and my studio does not have any kind of AC. And I can open the windows, that's great. But uh, it gets hot out here. So I don't have the ability to draw for longer periods of time without sweating all over my drawing. And I don't really want to ruin it with sweat. So today we're going to move over and work on Ashley. And that's probably a good thing because I've got some crazy lighting. It's, it's early afternoon and the light coming in from the window here is nuts. So it would leave all sorts of little crazy dots and stuff. And it's a little tricky to draw on that kind of situation. So I'm going to just move down here to Ashley and not worry about all of the weird lighting. Word. I'm out here drawing in the middle of the afternoon. There's going to be like a lot more noise than I usually get on the videos of background noise like airplanes flying overhead, things like that. It's not like we're on an air strip or anything, but we do get a little bit of airplane noise every once in a while. I'm going to add a little shading throughout this area here because we don't love having just plain old dark lines on our edges. Taliesin's got this dark line on his neck and she would have had a dark line on her hair and dark lines are the antithesis of realism. It immediately implies cartoon and I'm trying not to do that at all in here. We want 
shapes and forms, not lines. And of course it's tricky because when we're young, we're immediately learning to draw things with lines. The lines are the outline of the thing, you know, and we all learn, well, not all, I guess there's some prodigies out there that learn better early. But most of us learn drawing lines way before drawing shapes and highlights and shadows. there are little stray lines out there is half the battle. dark hair against Allison's dark shirt and I'm going to create a white line that divides them. But white lines tend to be thought of by the brain as a rim light kind of a highlight and <clears throat> probably get away with it okay.
Tyler just has this great, soft, friendly, best friend kind of look. Like, you just want her to be your best friend. And then, once you get to know her, you realize that, oh, she's probably going to just get you in a lot of trouble as a best friend. And that's the good kind of trouble. <laughs> uh, oh, we went out and did all this crazy stuff and didn't get caught. So, it's great. And we'll have lots of stories to tell. <laughs> Just somehow or another, she looks like all of that. So we've got to try and capture that on here. Or Talison's is more like a look of, yeah, we got caught, whatever. It's just the way I see people. I'm sure other people see it entirely differently. But I kind of use that when I'm drawing a portrait. I'm like, how do I imagine this person is, and can I capture that in the drawing? Even if the way that I'm imagining them isn't at all like they actually are, it's like if I see them like that in a photo and want to try and capture that in the drawing, then if I do, then at least I've captured my vision of how I, it seems like they are to me. And it translates into getting that portrait more than just accurate in its shapes and shadows and things, and also accurate in the feeling that the person gave off to me. And if I can pull that off, I consider that successful, because you know, normally only I know how I feel about the way a person looks. Unless I'm talking about it on YouTube, which, I don't know, might be a crazy thing to do. I probably should have someone looking over my shoulder saying, Rob, yes or no on this? No? Maybe no. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think if I'm capturing how the look of that person feels to me as a kind of person, then probably more than just shadow and shape back. Because we all have reactions when we see different people's faces and looks, and that reaction is part of our recognition of a person.
I guess it's kind of like doing a caricature where you really have to look at somebody and get a vibe off of them right away and then capture that vibe whether or not it's accurate to the person if it's accurate to the artist that's really all you can ask for I wonder if I have friends that are doing caricatures that would weigh in on that if you get that weigh in in the comments um, you know, I keep saying, um, every time I do one of these videos, I tell myself, oh, I'm going to remember to have people like and subscribe on these videos. And I forget every time. And apparently the, the rule is if you don't tell people that you need likes and subscribe subscribers on the video, nobody will, which is a little nuts. Don't, you know, we all know how it works by now, right? So, I'm going to throw this out there. Like, please like my videos and subscribe to my channel because I have way fewer subscribers than I should have at this point. Like, really, I've been at this for a, a long... Oh, hell, I've been making YouTube videos for... I think my first video was like 14 years ago or something like that. I have, I think, less than 200 people subscribing to me right now. So... Let's see what we can do about that. If you're watching this video, please do me a solid and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more of these uh, this week. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do on this picture. And I'm going to video it all. And I will spend as much time out here in my studio as the heat up here in the Seattle-Tacoma area would allow. And record it all and make sure that you get a chance to follow along and watch what I'm doing. It'll be fun and you won't know that I'm doing it every time unless you're subscribed to my channel. So if this is something that you find enjoyable to watch, I know some people find these follow along drawing videos very relaxing, uh, the drawing and the painting stuff that is Sometimes you learn a little from it, and sometimes you just kind of chill out and let it be your your background meditation thing. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you find some value in it, and I hope you have the ability and interest in seeing more. Because I'm going to do more. There will be more either way. I have a very light guide that I'm working from. Don't know if you'll be able to see it on this video, but on some of them it's kind of obvious, and others it's less so, and uh, I have a feeling that has a lot to do with whatever light is going on in the studio while I'm drawing. Um, but this very light guideline doesn't have even half of the shapes figured out that I need, so I'm kind of... What I do is I like look on my reference here and say, okay, this is horizontal to that, and this is vertical to that, and just line things up as I go. That's what I try to do. In some places it's very important, and in other places, like the collar on the shirt or something like that, like I'm dealing with here, uh, doesn't necessarily have the same level of importance, but once one thing is off, it can lead to other things getting all out of, out of whack, and, uh, 
and the next thing you know, everything is in the wrong place because you're lining up things to things that were lined up incorrectly and it spirals. And we don't want that. We definitely want to avoid that. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible right from the get-go. on the other video of how some characters define the edges of other characters very well. Some faces and bodies define the edges of the other ones and this is where it's really going to start getting pretty clear how that works because Ashley defines a lot of things between Pike and Sam and Scanlan's feather. Got a lot of different points that you can pull from to locate where other things are just from where Ashley is.
every stroke is circumstantial. I'm doing one of these, but I have found that when it comes to hair, if you have long straight hair, you gotta do long straight strokes. You gotta get those strokes pretty singular from start to finish. And light pressure in the beginning, light pressure at the end, heavier pressure in the middle. Get those strokes nice and long. Because otherwise it looks like split end broken hair damage kind of hair. and the hems and stuff on these clothes edges are much darker than I'm making them. But I'm going to go in with my blender when all of this is darkened out and add a little tone to all of those so that they aren't quite so jump out at you. Right now they're very jump out at you. see that it was there at one time. And behind Sam's ear, same thing. Okay. So one of the things I was thinking about, people were wanting to know if I was going to sell prints of this when it's done, and, and the answer to that is blatantly no. Like, I will not sell prints of people's faces, especially people I don't know who have not given me permission to do that. Uh, the hope, of course, is that at some point or another, I kind of have no idea how this will happen at this point, but at some point or another, the critical role people will see it, will like it, and will be willing to sell prints of it. That would be fantastic. Um, it's also something of a pipe dream. So 
there's another thought that I had since I, I will not make money on other people's faces, basically. It doesn't seem cool. But what I will do is send them out as like prizes for maybe like YouTube giveaways or something. So I really would like to have more subscribers on my channel and I would like to have more subscribers on the Legacy of Fools channel, the show that I'm, that I'm working with, the streamers that do the um, released material D&D stream. Right now they're running through Minds of Fandelver. And these are all friends of mine. They're, they're very cool people. Many of them are actors down in LA. Um, and they do like improv things, comedy clubs down there and stuff like that a lot. But they have this stream going and I do all the artwork for the stream because I am the art guy when it comes to stuff like that. And Legacy of Fools has been a lot of fun. A project that I got involved with because my DM, who we, Gene and I have had him as a DM for over two years now, almost two and a half years. Um, during the pandemic, he was a, a DM from the uh, Camp D&D Online, Camp Dragon Online game now, because they're not allowed to use it. So Camp Dragon uh, hired him on to be one of their online game masters and we were in a bunch of his games and just had the best time and then when he left there we kind of went with him and just have him running a game for us every week with some friends from Vermont who we've never met in person. But that's how life is now with the way the pandemic made relationships out of people that you've never met. And you'd say, and may never meet, but no, we will absolutely meet each other at some point. We actually have a plan for that. Um, probably next summer, if all goes well. Um, but yeah, we actually met Jamie for the first time in person just a month and a half ago. We went down to LA and met most of the Legacy of Fools people in person at that point. We had all become friends, just me doing art for them, but we all got a chance to hang out for an afternoon and it was lots of fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking I might give these away as prizes to like random draws for subscribers. If you like and subscribe and leave a comment, then you get put in like a random draw. That may be a while from now before I actually start doing that because right now uh, my videos often have like to the tune of less than 20 views and maybe one or two comments. And as soon as that starts to stretch out a little bit, then I might be willing to start doing little giveaways. So get on it, get started thinking about subscribing and putting comments on the videos. Uh, I know it makes a difference to the YouTube system. The more people who have commented on a video, the more likely it is to get shared with other people. And then, if enough people have subscribed because of a video and commented on the video, maybe it will get seen by one of these folks and then actually prints might become very available but even if they start selling them I will still reserve the right to give them away on YouTube videos so we'll, we'll make that happen it'll be like a pre-existing condition 
sort of thing. I think I've got actually set up here. And I'm going to move into Pike a little bit because I haven't been sweating on the drawing surface too terribly yet. So I've got this nice breeze coming in. It's 85 degrees out here, but I do have a really nice breeze coming in. So my sweat level isn't terrible. My hands are still dry, so I'm not having a problem with touching the paper. Which I was a little concerned with, but it seems to be working out just fine. I'm pretty good at not sweating while I'm drawing, at least in my hands. The rest of me, uh, no, no saying. But uh, this has worked out okay so far today, so. going to keep going for as long as feels reasonable. Like I said on the last video, a lot of the trick of getting these sculpture references to look like actual people is going to be how the hair is handled, I think. And I've drawn so much hair in my life, because I love hair. Hair is, hair is the best. Um, drawn enough hair that I think I can make it pretty believable.
piece. This character's like wing section here. Then there's gonna be a chunk that goes underneath the character behind her. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure this out. This is some stuff. We have street racers in our neighborhood. It's quite loud. They like their my mufflers or whatever to be uh, just ridiculously loud. And we live on a 25 mile an hour street. And they go down there at about 55, 60. Which does suck most of the time, but what are you going to do? to survive despite all odds. Because just the odds are they would have been killed by now. Those people are not seeing animals crossing the road when they're driving down. And we do see quite a few animals hit by cars in our neighborhood, but we haven't lost our little guys yet, our cats and that hang out in our yard. They hang out in quite a few yards in the area, so we're the ones that feed them and have like a little house for them, but I know when I, when I call them in for dinner, they'll come from quite a few houses away. So they're scamming time from everybody in the area. to make sure there's no street racers going by before I put dinner out for them.
Always a good feeling when the eyes go in just right. They look like they're lined up and looking in the right same direction. And like, that tends to be the case with any medium, sculpting or drawing or whatever. If you get the eyes in, you're just like, oh. resting it on this dark area right here and then transferring it over onto where the critical wall logo is and that's unfortunate but that's why there's erasers and I really have to remember to bring out my needed eraser it's not out here in the studio it's in the house and I don't know why I must have been using it on a project I don't know months ago and has never brought it back out. are much, much darker than I've shown, but I also want to give them a little bit of a break up because that helps the realism effect. Okay. 
within the sculpture. Of course, they're just one piece. So otherwise it wouldn't cast very well, I imagine. Okay, I feel like that's probably a good place to take a break. Because while my hands aren't getting sweaty, my head is. And that's a little dangerous for dripping reasons. We cannot get any drips on this or it'll mess with the paper surface. And then when I try and do dark things in that area, it will break through and that would be unfortunate in a huge way. All right, I feel like I've got the tones on them pretty close. Cool. So we're going to leave that off here and I should get rid of the crud that's on the logo. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me guys. And I will be at it again tomorrow, whether or not it's like 90 something degrees out here and like and subscribe, like I said. And it would be fantastic. Maybe you'll get a copy of this when it's finished. All right. Bye now.